We're back in Gold in Golden Grove, BOC. Not a tour, not a set of youth men from Central Central High School. And these are excellent young men. This is a place where they never gonna come. They don't want to be here. So what have they seen so far? So far we gave them a tour of what lockdown looks like. We showed them what the process is of coming into the jail, intake. We showed them medical. We showed them where the cafeteria is. And now we're going down to the rec yard. And the goal is to? The goal is to keep them and have them safe with a change of mind where they don't see this place as some place they want to be. This is trying to, you know, detour them from coming here. Once again, we're in BOC, John Bell facility with students from Central High School. We're just trying to keep them on the street. We have a large group of carrots here. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to see. Uh, this is this is a holding. This is a holding where some men stay until they get sentenced. You can't go in this one. This is man waiting, waiting, waiting. Where's Saji? Where's Saji? Come in the front, no miss. That's V-Man. Yeah, V-Man. Basically just sitting down and you just waiting for whatever they decide to do with your life. Because like I tell you, if you can't afford a real lawyer, you just end up sitting down here for years, fighting for your life or just giving your life away. You don't know which way it's going to go, you don't know how it's going to play, but guess what? Once you sit down inside there, the hardest place to come out is from behind this door. Everybody in here, waiting to get sentenced, waiting to get some kind of time. Some people waiting to go home, but going home once you come in here ain't a guarantee, man. It hard, it hard, hard. No, this is, these guys here ain't been sentenced. Blessings and love. No, Mr. Crosby, them guys there hasn't been sentenced. That's why I was explaining to them that, like you just waiting, and you don't know what you're waiting on. That's just, that's not the same place where we just came No, that's locked down down there. Okay. This there is just men waiting now. In this one, they have the men that already been sentenced. Wow. Them the ones that don't have the time, you know. Okay. Uh, see this lady right here? Right. She's giving me a hard time when I've been here. And she's not a fair police. She's a very, very rough. Hey, hey, I go. You coming down now, the bottom? Mm -hmm. Hey. She wants to speak. Yeah, she. So she gave you a rough time to keep you straight? Yeah, yeah. She will do her job, point blank period. She will sit down and joke with you, crack a joke, keep it pushing. Don't cross the line. No, and she will fight man. For real, for real. Like, you want to touch that one there? You got a good picture of her. You all right? We'll see further. Hey, what channel? I don't tell her you a joke about that one day. Listen, right? When I been in, yeah, I used to attack more than that little yellow. I, I used to call her the yellow tail snapper. Be like, yeah. Hey, food or no? That day, that day, I used to be like, what? No, the man, she used to act. I take a chance one time and touch her, and I get in a lot of trouble. Where she ain't snitch, them man just. Yep. Tusty. Everybody know what tusty is, right? With a big tusty, you know, okay, get what? You don't see no kind of woman, right? When I been in here, majority of the man them, right? It was two pieces of eye candy that we used to call eye candy in here, right? It was Miss Benjamin and Miss Gilbert, the one that up there, right? This woman here, right, man would watch, but man, I mean like real bad man, man that is more rough for real, man that don't show wrong man, they will watch, but they will never, never 
think about touching. Why? Because she's serious. You watch her and think she's simple. I don't see she got a wife for real. Man got knife in their hand for real, for real. Like, man, that's so. And she, she defending. She ain't running in the booth and bawling. Call it doom squad. She come in. See, she, when she see she do so, <coughs> drop that stick, she ready. She go on and she always keep on them pretty eye and stick. But she for real, for real about us. Same thing with the other little cute face you see. I used to watch him and be like, God damn, I can't wait to go home, man. Damn. I used to, I would be like, man, what man there in here for? So we could watch each one walk around and you don't tease in your mind. Like, this place, it just, you know, it ain't, it ain't worth it. it. Ain't worth it, man. One big loss, and this is my, my biggest problem, my loss. I can't be without being in front. I like to be around women. And there you're there around balls all day. <laughs> it come to a point where you can actually smell balls. And there'll be sweaty, sweaty. Are you only sweating when I've been in it? In that room, there'll be hot summertime. No, the outside has AC, but inside the cell, yeah. there's no AC. Yeah, there's no AC inside. Yeah, yeah, No. Yeah, yeah, ain't no, ain't no AC. It don't work, man. It, it, it just ain't no benefits in it, man. When we come in here, yeah, right? This place here, yeah, right? It's really for clowns. I used to be one of the biggest clowns them. In my head, I was a real clown because I come in, I get a chance to get back out, I stay out a couple of months, and I get back in here again. Till my people and my daughter, them, everybody used to think that this man just like to go in jail. But then you got a man then who the bus gun because they're defending their life. Anyway, go. This is how you end up. Whether you could justify it or you can't justify it, they say it's like the next house. For real, for real, right? That's the hospital. That there, right there, is the Preblo. We got our little commissary back there. No, not anymore. Oh, you move? You switch up a bit. The first building that you guys went to was the medical building. Yeah. Over there in the corner is the commissary. This is obviously the rec yard. Up there is the housing units. That's the chapel. Okay, the kit, the, um, the church there right there. Yeah. So in our terms, right? That's the, the chapel is like, a, is like the church. Yeah, that's the church. That's where the, that's where the um, pastor and so who to come to the units and talk. That's his little place. If you want to save your life, you want to try something save different. Your life when you want to make your life when you don't get stabbed up for medical. Right? <laughs> that's why you don't go out big, right? Hey. But um, yeah, normally, I, I, I trying to get this deal with right now. Um, I, I have something I would like to show you. But got these man, all right? Man that make little mistakes in life. It'll be so simple to make one, one bad choice. You know what I mean? And as big as you might think is just something so simple. Me and this man just been fighting. You know what I mean? You, this man fall along and dead. Big man, you coming in here for real. Whether you think it's just simple is he trip over his own foot. Can you hit it too hard? He fall along and broke his neck. You catch a body. That's just how it'll go. You catching the body. And most of our man, our people can just come up with a little forty, fifty thousand dollars. It's hard to come up with that kind of money to get a real lawyer. Once you come in here, easiest thing is coming in. Going home, like I tell you, is the hardest thing to get out. The wheels of justice that turn slow. No matter how good your case be, you may still sit on three, four, five, six years. Fighting and then to get out one day. You know what I mean? It just ain't worth it, dog. For real, for real. This place is for the birds. It's not for nobody. This man there, yeah. This man, yeah. You know, long I come and see this man over a decade ago, you know. I come and first meet this man, yeah, over a decade. Matter of fact, I lie, 14 years. Come and see this man, yeah, long time ago, and guess what? He's still there and he's still fighting. Man been in jail older than some of your parents. And he's still fighting for his life to come out of this place. Right now, he's still fighting. Every chance he get, he there in the legal process of trying to do something. Like I say, easy to come in, it's hard to come out. Uh, Khalil Jaffa. When I come to prison, my name was Samuel George. I had to change my name in 1992 because I was having such a hard fight. Apparently, somebody was in the court that had something to do with the people I was uh, accused of. Anyway, 
my, my journey in here is a book, but I'm going to try to be as brief as I could. First, choices. I have the opportunity to make the right choices. I wasn't a bad youngster growing up. I just was curious, adventurous, and spontaneous and make the wrong choices. I got the opportunity to make the right choices. Some uh, you got friends that or associate that just want to live a certain type of life. And they might try to influence you to live that type of life. Don't do that. You make your own choice. Because I was 22 when I come in here, I'm making 66. I done went through five gov. This is my fifth governor I trying to go through. With clemency, pardon, anything. I done had about 12 appeals. At one point, the court say, the court said that uh, there's no doubt your case could be reopened, but they still deny me. So it's a fight. Once you come in here, your life ain't yours. You got to follow rules and regulation. If you don't do that, you suffer more. You go in a deeper part of the jail, OK? When I come in, my mom was alive, my father was alive, my oldest son was alive, my three oldest brother was alive, everybody dead. I didn't get to attend, I get to attend my mother's funeral because at that point, I wouldn't do anything to go to my mother's funeral because I didn't get to spend no time with her, you know. From 13 years old, running the street. The street that just chew you up and spit you out. Don't listen to them, man. You might have family members that been done get hurt or done been killed by somebody else. Don't keep that mentality. They got higher power. Go and deal with that. What you put out is what you get back. If you do good, good gonna come to you. You're gonna be tested because we're dealing with forces. You're dealing with good forces and evil forces. You're gonna get tested even though you got good intention. But you gotta follow your vibe, follow your inner self, your inner, your gut feeling. Don't do, don't come here. It's that simple. Don't come here, cause you don't know when you're gonna get out. Don't kill nobody. Don't take no money. Don't do this. Don't do that. Kill nobody. Try to stay away from things where the hurt people. You know what I mean? My, I got four grandson. They getting, they getting. Uh, presidential awards because they're doing good. All of them, they love school. I, want, I would like to come out and do something for them because I ain't do nothing in life. I was 22, I was 66. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. I got choice. Make the right choice. Choice is the thing. Make the right choice. Don't listen to your partner. Don't listen to your partner with this gunplay and this and that. Too much native sons and daughters dying, man. You know what I mean? I use our future. We the next set of old people. We going to soon be gone. What are you going to do? Everybody going to have the same mentality, one dimensional. This is the way it is. Look at the wall. Chaos, total chaos and havoc. You know what I mean? Let's try to bring love back in the place, man. I used to come to St. Croix as a youngster. I spent more time in St. Croix in them 22 years than in St. Thomas. I used to come over here. I could start from, from Lagoon, Smithfield, White Lady, come all the way up, Camparico, Wimp, William Delight. I could have sleep any part of this island. If I drive in, I too tight, I could have pulled up and sleep. It ain't like that no more. This one don't kill this one relative, this one don't kill this one. For what? When you check the roots of the problem, it, don't, it could have been avoided. You don't have to take nobody's life. I ain't take nobody's life, and I in jail almost 44 years. I just was affiliated, you know. But, you know, do the right thing. I got a chance, man. You know, I so tired, I don't cry every day. Not no tears inside. Ain't nothing I could do about it, you know. I trying to get closer to God as much as I could, you know. But it's a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, you know. Um, 
There's a lot more things I done been through in this journey, but it take a while. I want other people to speak. If any of you individually want to ask me anything, you can ask, you know. Khalil Jaffa. Khalil Jaffa. Yeah, Khalil Nabi Jaffa. Yeah, it got meaning too. And that's another thing, you know. They don't teach us a lot of things in school. That's why a lot of youths get bored. Eh? Yeah, but mine was changed. That wasn't my name when I come here. It was Samuel Judge. You know, it was a ja Jaffa. J A F A R. Khalil. Yeah. Yeah. I had two sons, one gun. He was hit by a car. They had to look for him. He was hit so hard. He got hit down by Cane Brick. Cane Brick Project in 1985. You know, and. Um, other things that went on, sad. I don't really like to speak about them, you know? But try to stay away from here. There ain't no good ending, you know? Then you the same elements that's on the street in here, and now you trap off with them. It ain't like you could go, you could go west and get away from them, or go east and get away from them, or go west. You're in here with them every day, every day. Some days, man, they'll be having bad days, and they might just, Come in your lane. It's for you to know what to do and how to deal with the situation. But that's what it is. It's an everyday test in here. You know, don't think it, you, uh, they'll be saying, oh, in here is a country club, we got this. No, 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 no. Trust me, at any given time, anything could happen. You know, nothing ain't consistent. You know, so that's all I got to say for now. But, you know, I just stay safe and. You know, try to do the right thing. You know, people tell you, well, the system, this, the system, that. The system is the wall. If you're in a part of it, you got to go up in the hills like Bobo, and that's the only way to get peace. You ain't going to get no peace in the system not being a part of the system. Gentlemen, how everybody doing? Everybody good? My name is Jabal Octavius. This year, I'm going to make four years of the in jail. It's my first time ever coming to jail. The judge gave me 35 years. So my full release date is 2055. And I'm in jail from 2020. So I do the math. That's a long time, right? Trust me, I don't want to come here. Ain't nothing in here good for you. You check? You got to depend on people out there to do this for you. Buy your shoes, buy your clothes. You know what I mean? I, I could do everything for herself now. I don't got to depend on no mommy or no daddy. I'm you know, still young, but you know what I mean? I'm free. So I just need to focus on our education, do the right thing, listen to everybody. Nobody going to tell you nothing for your wrong. You check. When you come here, it just a, it's a fight, man. It don't be easy at all, man. Your friends them don't be there. Family don't say really be there like that. You check. You know, got, got a nice little good relationship with God, so start building what with you know. Don't wait till I get in trouble or things ain't going good. And then I'll crying to God, you check. Praise God every morning, every night before I go to sleep, you check. Education is the key. Try to get education, stay in school, go to college. If I had to play ball, play ball, you check. Play football. You get all kind of things you could do, you check, but. The street thing that in it at a time, and you just show your life, you check, you don't be here. You just jailing that, you check. <laughs> Boring, ain't no fun life at all, you know what I mean? The dumbest life I ever lived, dog, to be honest. Check. Yeah, so I just do our thing, man. Always listen to our parents. Our parents will always show her the right way, you know what I mean? Don't be that bad man thing. You check that bad man thing ain't no good at times. So. Like when you're here, you're walking. All them pays a hundred dollars a month. The cancer really do nothing with that. By the time you buy commissary, the money done. You check. You can't buy no shoes with it like that. You gotta save every penny if you want. You check. All day you're walking. Them are paying. Are you good? Get a trade, learn a trade, if I could learn a trade. Just do something constructive, man, and out there with our soca, pan, and because when you come here, 
That man ain't checking for you, my boy. That man out there living them best life. Parade, juvie. That man ain't thinking, but you are tired. You're the last thing on them mind that. You just talk to a man. As you hang up the phone, he forget, but you are ready. And that's facts. Me tell you no lie. You don't see it all the time. You check? There ain't no place to be, man. I just stay free, you check? Do the right thing. Stay in school. Get a good job. Provide for our family. And I mean it. Stay out the street as much as possible. You could go walk, go to the grocery store, you go home, you go a little church service. You know what I mean, but the streets ain't got nothing but jail or dead, my boy, you check? And I trust me, I don't want to die young, man. I come in here, I been 29, I'm 33 now. You check, still learning every day, you check? No one ever think like he's a big man because up to now I'm 33 and I still I feel like he's a big, big, big man, you check? Just get a good job. Get a good education, save our money, focus on yourself, love yourself. Nobody ain't gonna love you like how you love yourself. You check what I say? I take care of yourself, walk out the way to your car jail to do a hip hop push up and take, go to the gym, do a little walk out, keep ourselves healthy, run the track and feel if I got a track in our high school or middle school. You know what I mean? Just do positive, man, live right, just do the right thing, you know, right from wrong. Check. I ain't got too much to say, car. I ain't know what to tell her, you, boy. Tell me about your housing. How, how big is your room? Is that like a king size bed? Or well, my room is a small room right now. I live in with a next man. Hey, check. That ain't nice at all, neither, too. You try and sleep, he might be snoring. So you might not like nobody snoring. Six o'clock in the morning, you might be still sleeping. He want to use the bathroom. You got to get up, let him use the bathroom, man. You know what I mean? It's just weird feeling, man. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, so. So. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Like I said, education is the key. Love ourselves. <laughs> Listen to our parents. Respect our parents. And just do the right thing, man. Ain't nothing. That's the best thing to do. Just do the right thing. Don't mind no friends, no company, none of that. Because when you come in, eh? That money ain't going to be there. Check. So I just be safe, love and guidance all the time. Thanks. The body man. Doing best. Yeah. Yeah, a little nugget, a little treat for them today. You have to see a little, you know what I'm saying? Um. Blessed rise, ladies, youths, gentlemen. Name is Shalom Francis. Been incarcerated for 17 years now. I was, um, I was sentenced to life without parole in 2008. I was arrested. I was first arrested, first incarcerated at, in 2007. Um, I'm going to switch it up a little bit today. We're going to start different. I normally I do this to the end, so I'll switch it up a little bit. When I first got incarcerated, the first thing that I wanted to do was read my Bible. Get closer to God. I wanted to talk to God. And my brother then gave me a cigarette. At the time, at the time, cigarettes were, were prohibited in uh, facilities and things now before they banned them. So you could have got them from Kamasi. I got a cigarette from one of my, my um, uh, homeboy that I knew that was there already. <laughs> so, and I read my Bible while you smoking a cigarette. So let's start there. If anybody, anyone now, y'all don't have a relationship with God, do it now. Find a relationship. Create a relationship with God now. 
You know what I'm saying? That will be one of the greatest choices that you make, and you're going to see. You're going to see the fruits of it as you live and you journey through life. You know, so let's start there, right? Being incarcerated ain't nothing nice about it. I am, um, from my youth, I always been motivated, I always been ambitious. You know I'm saying? I always had goals, I always had dreams. I see myself doing things and going places. But at the same time, I always had a lot of distractions. Coming up through school, same thing through elementary. Was an honor student. Graduated from sixth grade, Joseph Gomez School in St. Thomas as an honor student. But um, started to drift away. As I went on to junior high and thing, you know, started to drift away, get in trouble, and mainly for, not even self, for myself, because I was the type of person that I don't like bully. <laughs> you check? I don't like people who believe this bully and believe like this bad man and they're going to pray on the week, right? See me, I was a humble dude, right? I used to be chilling most of the time, but at the same time, <laughs> me never been no punk. Me never been soft. I grew up in a house where it were like 11 of us, 11 or 12 of us. He part cousin, five minutes. All right, me ain't got much time. All right, I'm going to move on. Anyway, I didn't like bully and stuff, right? So most of the trouble I used to get into was because a man wronged me or man right no my little partner, and them were getting in trouble and man picking on them and I defending them, right? Same thing as I grew older, I from a neighborhood where as we had a beef with a lot of neighborhoods, right? But at the same time, I get people all over, so I could have go all over, right? You know what I'm saying? Never had really an issue there. You know, my main issues were with people around me. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't hear about so called friend. You know, I don't hear about man switching and man setting up, man. All kind of different grimy vibes, right? So, it'll happen in every neighborhood and ain't no different in mine, right? This is what we're going on. And unfortunately, I end up getting in trouble and getting incarcerated for a situation that took place in my neighborhood, not even an outer out of hood situation, right? You know what I'm saying? So, coming to prison now, backtrack a little bit, get about four more minutes. Um, I became a young father at the age of 16 years old. Remember I tell her about destructions. Now my destruction wasn't just in the streets and what was going on in the neighborhood with the beeps and stuff, but also with females. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was kind of popular with the females, right? You know what I'm saying? And I was off the porch, like, like, like ones will say, like, you know what I'm saying? Participating in stuff that I could have wait. I ain't really had to be, you know what I'm saying? Having sex and all that stuff, but I was doing that from a young age, right? I become a father at 16 years old, which, which put me in a position now to have to, to, to man up, right? And to become I'm responsible. I have responsibilities now, not for myself, but also for someone else. I get a whole other human being here that I have to be responsible for. So now I decided, after two months, two months before my daughter was born, I got shot, right? In a neighborhood beef that had nothing to do with me, but I was there. And the enemies didn't care. The man just pull up and the man dump on everybody. And I get hit twice in my leg, couldn't walk for three months. One of my brethren, them, there were five of us, everybody got shot. One of my brethren, them died. They didn't make it off the spot, right? My brethren, brother, right? Now, two months later, my daughter born. I decided I ain't going back to school because now I got to be a father and I got to take care of my responsibilities. So then now, struggling, trying to juggle between being a father and still taking care of myself and everything else I got going on, I got a job, but I'm still in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I'm hustling, doing whatever I could do so I could be able to provide for, for, my, for my little one, right? Now, fast forward five years later, I filed prison. Um, 17, 17 years later, here I am. You know what I'm saying? Now, my, my daughter was five years old when, when I filed prison. She 
making 22 years old in July, right? I don't miss out on her whole life, right? And I'm going to even share something with all you, because the one brother talk about pain and losing people, I lose many people, right? But it ain't nothing about being in a situation and they have a, like something going on, a crisis, health crisis or whatever with, with your child and you in a position that you can't do nothing for them. And I experienced that I've been dealing with it for the past two, three years now. My daughter was diagnosed with lymphoma at 19 years old, right? Thank God that, you know, she, um, she beat it. She's a survivor, you know what I'm saying? She had to do chemo. She half now, but after dealing with the chemo, she ended up having to deal with complications of like, you know, the chemo and stuff like that. So she's still on medication and she getting stronger, she's surviving. But I say that to say this, uh, like, uh, you don't know the pain that it'll feel to be in a position that you can't do nothing for your loved one. You know what I'm saying? Help your mother, even though your, your mother gets sick. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't there to be there by her side to help her. You know what I'm saying? These are the things that that, that you don't lose out on being inca incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't be there for your loved ones. You got to be there in a box like the brother talk about. A toilet, a bathroom with a bed and a sink. You know what I'm saying? And this is what you got to deal with your, um, your struggles and your, your pain and everything that you're going through in life. You know what I'm saying? And all because you're incarcerated because of, might not be for yourself, maybe something you get into with your partner them or you just you in the wrong place at the wrong time, or you just into you just into badness or into the streets. Now we're gonna tell you ain't nothing, ain't no reward from being into the streets. You know what I mean? Street life, bad man life, gun life, than it's jail or dead. Ain't no other reward. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, I ain't jail for 17 years now, being incarcerated, and that's all I've been seeing. Like you know what I'm saying? Man just dead in, like man just dying. You know? for over our kind of like petty vibes, street beef. Some, some of you might be from neighborhood where I know our neighborhood and beef and thing, and some of the little ones them are in the beef now, you ain't saying no what they beefing for. You check, when you trace it back, it's some petty vibe, like, you know what I'm saying? This man, great, great, great uncle, grandfather, cousin, used to deal with this man, girl, this man, you know what I mean, voices. You check, I know them are beefing, I kill each other. That's where daddy start from, and now, 50 years later, here we are, I from this hood and you from that hood, and all you know is who I don't like them man, my son. Who them man from over who? Yeah, that's them man. Me like them man. You don't even know why you don't like them man. You know what I mean? You just know that this is what you inherit because that's what's going on in these times. That's why I've been observing that. Hey, 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 hey. Here you go, it's okay. Never, I get one bigger. Better go to work. And that's no. for, what is that for? What are they for? It is <laughs> for compliance. For compliance, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna run when not that last shit. So we wanna thank you. Not a problem. Anybody else? Um, I could just pass them around to each man and then, yeah. Yeah. So, three different set, right? And you could pass it around to the man them, right? I uh, just pass it around. Watch, watch them pass them around. This is what I used to do for man the street. Me learn to do this in prison, right? But I tell uh, you about distractions. Now I had too many distractions. So instead of staying in school and focusing on my dreams and what I really wanted to do in life. You know what I'm saying? I had opportunity with her. I could have go away to the States to school. My cousin in New York telling me, my son, come, let's go. Come up here. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So all of this I could have been doing instead of doing it in prison. You know what I'm saying? For a hundred dollars a month, I could have been making 10 grand a month, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how much work I'm doing. Now, taking advantage of opportunities. I had opportunities that I didn't take advantage of. You know what I'm saying? But now we're in prison and I train, I scratching and clawing to take advantage of every opportunity that present to me, whatever programs. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot more I could show why, but I ain't got much time, right? You know what I'm saying? But 
I said that to say, say, are you in a space and a position right now in our life where you could take advantage of every opportunity? I get everything going on out there for you. I get people that love you. People that want to see I do good, push are you, guide in you in the right way. Don't take it for granted. Take advantage of every opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Don't end up, hey, listen, ain't no life in here, man. Don't mind how it look. Don't mind the stories that you hear. Ain't no life in here. It's just sufferation. Like the brother say, with a cry inside, even though like someone is shed tears for real. I don't see man bald tears for real. You know what I'm saying? The man who man would I think is the baddest of man them on the street. But when you come in here, right? <laughs> ain't none of that at all matter, you know. You know what I'm saying? Your friend them, everybody will forget about you because you're out of sight and you're out of mind. And life goes on on the outside. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody waiting on you. You know what I'm saying? You take advantage of every opportunity presented to all you. You know what I'm saying? Whether in school, in the neighborhood, in the community, uh, like sports, wherever are you into, you might be into cars, like wherever you into, they just open the, the car track again, them and they get junior races and stuff. Like wherever are you into, man, the sky's the limit. Don't let nobody keep you in no box. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like we don't say like, so, some of them, you know, they do afford to us as inmates, but we got a new thing that we don't say. Like, we no inmate, like, you know what I'm saying? We returning citizens. You know? My name is Jamal Martin. I'm from St. Thomas. Um, I come from a good, honest family. My mother been a um, detective. And keep on, keep on. When I come from the States, you know, she was, she, was, she was leading me the right way and I wasn't listening. You know what I mean? Some guys were threatening my, my brother and I take law into my own hands. When I didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? I could have went and, you know, file a report or do things the right way. I didn't have to take law into my own hands. You know what I mean? And I just get out of control. And I embarrass my family, you know what I mean? And it really affect me a lot. Because you can't just think like, when you're doing things, you can't just think like you're just doing things for yourself. You can't just think about yourself. You have to think about the, the people that are around you that care for you, that are trying to help you. You know what I mean? Don't always be just thinking about yourself. You have to make your, your, your family and your, your people them happy and just do the right thing, man. You know what I mean? Stay in school. Don't be getting into no fight. Because the street life, this street life, it don't mean nothing, man. It's like, you, you, it's like, the best thing to do is do the education thing and live an honest life and find, find something that you really like to do, man, and master it. But all that bad man thing, it don't mean nothing. I don't get shoot already in my foot. I don't get stabbed, I don't get stabbed him, I don't get stabbed here. You know what I mean? I don't get stabbed in my head. You know what I mean? I just wasn't listening. It ain't worth it, the man. I don't I don't I could have died a lot of times, but I still here. You know what I mean? And it just it just it don't, it don't be worth it, the man. It don't be worth it. So while I've been in here now, um I channel my energy, I I I start to walk out and stuff like that. And that'll, that'll clear my mind. So right now, um, I have a, I have a, as a licensed personal trainer. Um, I, also do, I also do physical therapy. And right now, I go into class to be a nurse. You know what I mean? I like to help old people that are working in the medical and that'll be helping the old people them and try to make them happy, help put them in the shower and stuff like that. I just trying to write the wrong that I do. You know what I mean? I'm trying to do the right thing. I got, uh, you have a chance right now, you have to take it serious. Life ain't no joke, man. It's a serious thing. When they send me to Virginia, they are sent me to, I've been Virginia, you know. I've been Virginia for a year, you know. And you're locked down, you're locked down for 22 hours. You know what I mean? A day. You don't want to be, like what kind of life is that? You gotta worry about you gotta worry about people that's trying to come at you because they have a lot of gay gayness that are going to. And and you you understand what I'm saying? 
So you have to, you have to worry, you have to worry about that. You have to worry about people trying to test you. People trying to fight you. You know what I mean? So when I went to Virginia, that's when I really realized, like, wow, I really doing time now. You know what I mean? And then I end up coming back. I because I, I, I have to keep fighting my case. I keep fighting, 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 fighting my case. End up coming back, and then they end up still sending me back. They send me Arizona now. So I don't been away twice. In the 14 years I do, I don't been America two times. You know what I mean? But all of this was happening because while I been in jail, all the stuff I was doing in jail, it was, it was, it was coming with me. Fighting, running in the visit, beating up people. I was, a, I was a monster. I don't beat up like four or three people in a unit one time by myself. So you have to challenge your energy into positive things. It don't be worth it. So when, I, when they bring me over here from St. Thomas now, they had me, as a, they had me like, what, this dude here is a bad dude. They put me in lockdown one time, you know. I've been in lockdown for five months. So I want to know why they get me in lockdown. I didn't do nothing over here, but why we're doing this at Thomas, it come with me. So it just make it worse. You know what I mean? Right now, I just cool out. I haven't been getting, haven't been getting and nothing. I've been doing my school thing. I just trying, trying my best to get out of this place and do the right thing. And I'm going to have a son too. I also have a son. He's um, my son just turned 18 years old in February. Me see my son, the last time I see my son, he was three years old. You know what I mean? So I don't really, if, I don't talk to him, but I don't really have that relationship like that with he, like that, you know what I mean? They just gone on with their life. They weren't studying me. So your parents and your family is, is who really love you, the man. Not no friends and stuff like that. If you have a friend and he, he, he guiding you the right way, that's a good friend. But anybody, any, anybody what, what, what telling you to do bad stuff, they don't really love you, the man. It's the people them what telling you to do good stuff is what really, really love you. Good morning, guys. How y'all doing today? Morning, what grade are you in? 9, 10, 11. Any seniors? Just one senior? How many? I've been in a couple of fights already in school. Everybody. What was the reason for y'all fights? Hmm? For other people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, for those of y'all that don't know, only one person here knows me. I am Officer Benjamin Samuel. I've been a correction officer for 12 years. Over there is my canine. Her name is Blondie. She is a electronic detection canine. So cell phones, USB, anything electronic, she can detect it. So when we have to come through your cell to find a phone, it will be caught. No if and buts or maybes. Every day, we have to dictate everybody in here life. When to come out, when to shower, when to eat, when to go sleep. Yeah, you have to do that now because you live with your parents. But you want the opportunity to go out and be independent for yourself. All these fighting and guns and whatnot, it's very unnecessary. If you want to have a weapon, have a weapon the right way because you have a business and you're trying to protect your business. Because you have a house and you're trying to protect what's in your house. Not because, yeah, I run in these streets, I get my weed to sell, I get my drugs to sell, I get money to make. That's not a mentality y'all need to have. I have kids. I have three kids. My eldest is going to 11th grade next year. She's been in one fight, a fight that had nothing to do with her. She was actually protecting her friend, pulling her away from the situation, and these girls come and jump her. When we come in the meeting, why? What was your reason? Oh, we just don't like them. We don't like how they don't watch we. You could tell people how to watch you? Because I stand in here and I watch you with a look on my face, I probably ain't even watching you. I'm looking your direction, but I'm not looking at you. My mind is elsewhere, but you're going to take it upon yourself. But what she watching me so far? Oh, it's beef. And then that's your friend. Oh, well, we're going to fend for you then. And what's the issue? Absolutely nothing. Y'all have, 
y'all have opportunities. St. Croix don't have much, don't get me wrong. Yes, there's different opportunities here and there that you will have to go seek, but you want an opportunity to see the world. And you want to go see the world because you come here and we have to ship you off to a different state. Y'all want to go to college, get trade schools, get certified in different stuff. Like, who wants to be an electrician? What y'all want to do with your life after school? What you want to do? Electrician. Electrician. Anybody else? The same thing he was doing body work. Yeah. Okay. You find that funny? What you want to do? Uh, truck driving. Yeah. Okay. So you want to be a delivery, a dump truck? Delivery. Okay. Delivery. Anybody else? You. You just keep snickering off to the side. Think me see you. What you want to do with yourself after? Give me something else. I could do real estate too. You could do real estate? Yeah. Go school for real estate. Go a lawyer. Go master. Anything. Anything where the money comes in. Wherever the money comes in? Yeah. So Have you been practicing real estate? <laughs> Have you been to a real estate office yeah. learning the craft? Yeah? OK, sell me this bike. <laughs> Buy the bike now? <laughs> <laughs> that's it? That's how you get? Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to say your own bike. Yeah, but that's what they do. I do heavy equipment operator, so I can handle a dump truck, a dozer, a baco, an excavator. Apart from that, I am a water purification specialist and instructor. Here, I am a defensive tactics instructor. So if you think, regardless of your size, you could take me on, I could take you down. <laughs> you said here you're what? Defensive tactics instructor. I'm also the firearms instructor. So you may have 50, I have 12. I'm more accurate than you. So why is it you have different skills? Huh? Why is it important to have different skills? I see y'all on the side. It is important to have different skills because you never know what route you want to take in life. I might not want to be a CEO for the rest of my life. I could apply anywhere and get a different job. I could go customs and go deal with canines because I'm certified in that. I could go VIPD and just be one of their instructors because I'm certified in that. I could go to the States and decide I want to do on a water plant because I am certified in that. Or I could do my own business and have my own construction company because guess what? I'm certified to do that also. Because you were trained? I am trained. I'm in my 30s. You're not being disrespectful. I'm in my 30s. Some women do take offense to you asking them their age. I'm OK with it. I'm in my 30s. Who said 31? Who want to be specific? So if you can do it, these young men could start Definitely. You can start from now and do it. Section right over there is where the females are detained. We have two serving life sentences for murder. We have one serving a few months. A mistake on Nanta herself because she was here on vacation and an accident occurred. So unfortunately, she's stuck in this situation. She's not even from here? No. Hmm? Mm hmm Yes. So yeah, you know, we was here at Golden Grove. BOC, and we're trying to make sure that we enlighten our youth them and what we have here at Golden Grove to deter them from coming to this place. The stories you heard are real. And guess what? We're trying to make a difference. Thank you for the support. Governor Bryan, BOC, Winnie Testamark, everybody who supported it, my boss, Gun Violence Prevention, Antonio Emmanuel, thumbs up to peace. See you next time.